Yes, guys. So let's look at India's 23 borrowing cost. Guys, this happens to be a integral part of your asset related standard because the objective of borrowing cost standard is very simple. It says in general sense, you would have transferred the borrowing cost or the finance cost to the PN. But in certain situations, this borrowing cost which you have incurred is eligible to be capitalized to the cost of the asset. That is the fundamental objective of this standard borrowing cost. If you go with the definition, first of all, to understand what is a borrowing cost, it says a borrowing cost is an effective interest rate or the finance charges under finance lease or exchange differences to the extent they can be regarded as borrowing cost. If you have a comparable standard to AS, your accounting standard, it was AS 16, which was talking about borrowing cost. Where under borrowing cost, you have a particular definition of borrowing cost, which says interest and other com commitment charges, amortization of cost incidental to arrangement of borrowing, amortization of discount on issue or premium on redemption of debt, finance charges under finance lease, exchange differences to the extent they can be regarded as borrowing cost. So this is particularly how it was defined as per AS 16 borrowing cost. But when it came to India S 23, he has confined only to three steps. Effective interest rate, finance charge under finance lease, exchange difference to the extent they can be regarded as borrowing cost. That means the first three parts, that is interest and other commitment charges, amortization of cost incidental to arrangement of borrowing, amortization of discount on issue, or premium on redemption of debt. These three have been combined together on a combination they have called it with a word called as effective interest rate. With this concept of effective interest rate, you will also get in India's 109. That is your financial instruments where he uses the word amortized cost using effective interest rate. What is this effective interest rate? How do I calculate an effective interest rate first of all? Let's see. Yes, guys. So let's look at this concept of effective interest rate. Then, How do I calculate this effective interest rate? Let's say, for example, my loan amount is 1 lakh. Let's say the interest calculated or interest rate on this loan is about 10%. But there were also processing charges on the loan the processing charges were about 2%. The tenure of the loan is let's say 5 years. That means 
each year my principal should get repaid by 20000 and my emi should be including that my installment should be including the interest so 20000 plus interest will be paid each year so if i look at cash flows year cash flows then look at it year 1 or year 0 the first time that i have taken the borrowing i should have got 1 lakh but since there is a processing charge of 2% which is attached to it i will only get 98000 year 1 2 3 4 and 5 i'll have to repay the loan how much will i repay the loan by first year 20000 plus 10% on 1 lakh so i will repay or I, there's a cash outflow of 30000 rupees second year 20000 already repaid loan outstanding is 80000 on 80000 10% is 8000 principal repaid 20000 28000 like this if you go on third year he will repay 26000 fourth year he will repay 24000 and fifth year he will repay 22000 if you calculate an ira considering all these numbers if i go with the computation of irr then my irr will be 10.35% or something like that a little over 10 it is not 10 percent why is it not 10 percent instead of this 98,000, if it had been 1 lakh then it would have been 10 percent but since now it is not 10 percent but uh, since, uh, since it is not 1 lakh and only 98,000, you will find that the effective interest is slightly more why is it slightly more because the two percent or two thousand which you got deducted as processing charges at the beginning they have to be amortized over the period of loan that is over the period of five years to accommodate this the concept of effective interest rate has emerged here to accommodate this we have this concept of effective interest rate which emerged so that is the reason why he included the word effective interest rate effective interest rate includes all interest and commitment charges amortization of cost incidental to arrangement of borrowing amortization of discount or premium on redemption of debt, finance charges under finance lease and exchange differences to an extent they can be regarded as borrowing cost. So effective interest is a combination of all the three. So whenever you come across an effective interest, you will find that the effective interest is slightly more than the actual interest cost. What is this finance charges? Finance charges under lease we will observe today when we discuss about India's 116 exchange difference to, to the extent they can be regarded as borrowing cost what is this exchange difference to, to the extent they can be regarded as borrowing cost let's look at this let's say for example look at the example first then i will tell you how we calculate look at the example first my borrowing is actually i need one lakh rupees i need a borrowing of one lakh rupees but let's say for suppose for suppose i take a borrowing in rupee i would be paying 12 percent rate of interest my finance manager walked in to me and he said sir why are you borrowing in rupee terms have you seen the rate of interest the rate of interest is 12 percent i'll give you a fantastic idea go to us and borrow from us rate of interest is just five percent and fine nice how much should I borrow? Said sir, dollar rate is 50 rupees. We need 1 lakh. If you borrow 2000 dollars, then automatically you will get 1 lakh rupees. But the interest rate is only 5%. I believed in what my finance manager has said and I borrowed in dollars. So I borrowed 2000 dollars at 50 rupees per dollar at the rate of only 5%. So at the end of the year, when the interest was supposed to be paid, 5% on $2,000, I paid just $100 interest. Had I borrowed in India, if I would have borrowed that 1 lakh in India at 12%, I would have paid 12,000 rupees. $100 at the end of the year, I looked at the end of the year and the interest, uh, the exchange rate towards the end of the year was 55. 
even then i was happy because 100 dollars 55 rupees per dollar i paid only 5500 if i would have actually borrowed in rupee terms i would have actually paid 12000 rupees instead of 12000 i paying only 5500 has given me a significant advantage because today i have a savings how much did you save 12000 minus 5500 I saved 6,500 rupees of interest. Now, why did the rate on dollar increase? Because theoretically, we align with the concept called as interest rate parity theorem. What is your interest rate parity theorem? It says that the country which has a lower interest rate always has a, a, a currency keep, which keeps on appreciating. Same way, here since the dollar interest rate is lower, I expect the dollar to appreciate. Therefore, it increased to 55 rupees per dollar towards the end of the year. But now when a repayment comes up, I have to repay $2,000. Each dollar should be purchased at 55 rupees. Therefore, to buy $2,000 at the end of the year, in rupee terms, I should spend 1 lakh. 10,000. I should spend 1 lakh 10,000. That is the exchange loss to be recognized on each balance sheet date as per India's 21. So he is saying you saved a notional interest of 6,500, but unfortunately you incurred an exchange loss of 10,000. So in such situation, he is saying to the extent of lower of these two savings and interest cost. And the exchange difference on foreign currency borrowing, I will consider it as borrowing cost as per index 23. So lower of these two is 6500, which I will consider as your interest or borrowing cost. So if you ask me what is your interest or borrowing cost as per index 23, actual borrowing cost paid in dollar 5500 plus exchange difference to the extent they should be regarded as borrowing cost 6500. Combination of both 12,000 rupees is my borrowing cost as per India's 23. How much was your exchange difference on foreign currency borrowing? 10,000. Out of 10,000, 6,500 is treated as borrowing cost as per India's 23. The difference or the balance 3,500, I will treat it as per India's 21, where I will straightforward charge it off to PN. Clear? What if? What if subsequently there is an exchange gain, then what you will do? If there is an exchange loss, you treated it as borrowing cost. If there is an exchange gain subsequently, initially there was a borrowing cost, but subsequently I found that the exchange rate has decreased, therefore there is an exchange gain which arises. Then in such cases, I will reduce the borrowing cost only to the extent it was increasing the borrowing cost in previous years. Current year, how much did I increase my borrowing cost by? 6,500. 6,500 rupees of exchange loss was treated as borrowing cost as per your definition of borrowing cost. So subsequent year, if there is an exchange gain, to the extent of 6,500, I will treat it as reduction from borrowing cost. But more than 6,500, if I get a gain, then that gain should be transferred to PNL as per India's 21. I've given two examples check. Subsequent year, if your dollar rate has come down to 53 rupees per dollar, then the exchange gain is 4000, which is less than 6500. Therefore, it should be reduced from borrowing cost. But if your exchange rate goes down to 51 rupees per dollar, then the exchange gain is 8000. Out of 8000, 6500 should be considered as reduction from borrowing cost. But the balance 1500 should be treated as exchange gain as per in days 21. Clear? I'll make this available for you. Check.